see. Okay, imagine. Spoiler imagine it this warning, way, guys. No, just think. <laughs> of, just think of it this way. Imagine if in Sonic there were like six different incarnations of Eggman. To everyone who, like me, yeah. doesn't understand Kingdom Hearts very well, I'm really sorry for bringing this up. <laughs> no, it's okay. Look, I tried to oh, keep okay. it as I tried to keep it as simple as I could. I, I like stripped out like 99% of the flavor fluff. But Namora again, Namora sounds like he pulls a lot out of his ass. Oh, he does. He but does. A, but again, just imagine. But people again, like if, uh, eat that shit up, and I don't get it. But again, just imagine if Eggman like created six different versions of himself, and then they somehow all exist in the same space because he brought them back from various points in time, for some reason. <laughs> Because apparently now, previously to make a Keyblade, you just had to have light and darkness clash one person. But oh, now all of a sudden he needs 13 and 7 people on both sides, respectively. Because there were 13 darknesses and <laughs> 2 and 7 princesses of heart in one. And every That's time, why. The, and it's like basically it's any so time dumb. the characters were talking in the earlier games, they were lying the entire time. It's like, geez, just give us some solid footing to have some idea of what's happening. Exo, can I ask why you so often hear about Final Fantasy 13 and how, like, the story doesn't explain anything and it's all pulled out of the ass, it's stupid, the storytelling is bad, blah 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 blah. With Kingdom Hearts, I feel like it's even worse and people love it for some reason, so what's... Well, no, it's... <clears throat> some people love it, but most people, I feel like, at least understand that it's dumb. Because it's like someone like Sonata loves it, on ironically. People like Kadox like it ironically. It's mm -hmm. there, but there are those few people like King K. Not to keep calling him out, because you know, like he, he enjoys the the series wholeheartedly. Fine, good for him. But it's just like there are people in his sort of group that like just don't care. And it's just like whenever I I I think the series needs to reboot honestly and get rid of Nomura and get someone who can actually write and put them in charge. Because Nomura does not need to direct everything at Square Enix. Like, there are does, other talented people working Didn't he also do Final Fantasy XV? He used to, and then I think they got rid of him because he was taking too long. I it, it probably had too much stuff to cram into it. Um, like, again, I do think there is a reason people fell in love with this series in the first place. Early on, it was relatively simple. And uh, if they had just kept it that way, like, there is a strong nugget there. Like... I love the whole concept of like Heartless and Nobodies and so on, but I don't care about time travel. I don't care about like all this other stuff. There's no reason for me to. It's just extra things you have to memorize. Get yeah, I, I actually did memorize. I actually did play. I've, I've played Kingdom Hearts three up the first two worlds, which I believe was the Hercules world, and then I did the Toy Story world, and I haven't gone back to it in like over a month now. I'm like, well, that's probably enough. <laughs> But um, what I noticed about it, and I wasn't even remotely surprised by this, was that what I really wanted was, like, a version of this game that would ruin it for people who like it. Like, and not surprisingly, that would involve that would probably involve making it sort of match much more of the structure of, like, what it might have looked like if it had come out on a Super Nintendo. Like, like I, I think 3 would have been better if it had a new group of villains. Not Xehanort, not his little organization yes. buddies, just new villains who are fucking around with worlds. Because there are moments in 3 that I really like. Like, the, the entire idea that the bad guys are interested in the Toy Story world because they've realized the toys there are alive and they're like, whoa, that's really cool. We gotta figure out how this works. Or when they get to the, the Pirates of the Caribbean world, they're like, wait, this guy removed his own heart and he put it in a box and he's still alive. I want to figure out how that happened. I see. I love the idea of the bad guys being interested in how all the different Disney worlds work. That is really fun to me, especially when they see to, what's to the it, game's credit. The villains have a reason to go to those worlds. Es especially like here's the funniest <laughs> part to me. You see, when they talk about a heart, they mean the magical glowy thing that's kind of like a soul, but not really. But then they find out that in the, you know Davy Jones's chest is the literal pulsating disgusting <laughs> organ they're like wait wait that thing that's what they were talking about Ugh, no way <laughs> that's really funny to me 
I, I'm I personally just was that sick of the visual of people in cloaks. I'm so sick of seeing yes. that stupid robe everywhere. Yes. Get rid of it. With a zipper that but goes all the it way wasn't, down. I also heard that Kingdom Hearts 3 basically has separate storylines in the worlds and then decides to dump, like, the main Kingdom Hearts story yes. at the very end. Oh, yes. That is exactly what happens. There is no reason for the Disney worlds to be there. Now, it was cool how except, at the very beginning... Except that they have to be there, you know, because it's Kingdom Hearts. Yes. But in terms of storyline, Sora has absolutely no reason to go to any of these places. The villains do, and once Sora's there, he has a reason to stay, but he has no particular reason to go to Toy Story World. I thought it was And that neat. is something that they only got right in the first game, where, like, he was looking for his friends, and he didn't know if they would necessarily be there, but if they weren't there, he could at least lock the keyhole and save that world. And that is something that they have not done well since. Has Nomura always done the Kingdom Hearts games? Yes. But when they made the okay. first game, they weren't completely sure that they would be able to make any more, and that's why they <clears> kept <throat> the plot so simple, because as far as they knew, that might be their only chance to tell the story. So they better wrap it up nice and neat. Yeah. Anyway, okay, back and to Sonic. it's still Sonic. the best story in the series. It was back, neat. <laughs> back to Sonic. It was Where neat how now? you got to play as classic Sora uh, for just a minute at the beginning, and I really wish he'd stuck around. <laughs> I, th I think classic Sora has just a much more appealing design, much more oh universal. My word. Okay, so wh where are we? We're in Hang, Hang Castle. Castle. Oh my word! To be confused with Hung Castle, which is a very different thing. But the reason I brought oh up that example in the first place was just to say, like, almost universally, I think your favorite iteration of Sonic is going to be the one that you grew up playing. Um. Yes. <laughs> and I no. think that the fandom would do well to remember that about each other and to and to keep that in mind when it comes to themselves and not have to make everything so like, oh, you're just you're just blinded by nostalgia. Well, everybody's going to be kind of blinded by nostalgia. Well, That's OK. That is not the oh, case for me. Josh, I, I did not. People cool. can't argue in general without insulting each other. That, it's not just with <laughs> Sonic. <laughs> so get, get this, though. I did not grow up with classic Sonic. I almost completely skipped over that era. And Adventure Sonic was my first. And so you'd think that he would be my favorite. And yeah, I really like him in his, his own way. And I love those games. That's generally how I want 3D Sonic games to play. But I still have this special appreciation for classic Sonic that I didn't have at first. But over the years, you know, that that I, I grew it. So I'm actually not one of those cases where I just like the you know the thing I grew up with. Give me a medal. <laughs> I will give you a medal. Because I'm special. Yeah, this, this, it's this like is it, it's not true, exclusive Josh. to the Sonic's fan base at all. No, it's not. I mean, it's just people in general are. <laughs> Fucking fishes. Like you, but you see that in uh, across every iteration of it. Like there were people, like who hated Sonic. And, like the primary, one of the biggest reasons that people hated Sonic Advance Two wasn't so much because it was a pretty poorly made, repetitive game. They also hated it because it was a 2D Sonic game that broke from the formula of what a 2D Sonic game was supposed to be, and that was seen as you know, that that was seen as blasphemous. Uh, there are people who... Oh, they're, so they're, that's how people reacted online at the time? Yeah. Yeah, most people really okay. didn't really didn't care for, uh, for Advance 2. See, so yeah, my problem with it is that it plays like crap. Exactly, it does. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it, it, it was even worse for people because not only did it, like, throw out, like, the, the, the style of what 2D Sonic had always been, but it, it did that and then made a game that was, that was you know... Not very good at all. Boop. And you know there Whoa. are people who like people never liked the Rush games. Pe like there are people who never liked uh, Rush and Rush Adventure because for being too for being too speed focused. There are people who even from the very from so from the from when Sonic Adventure One first came out, there are people who didn't like it because they f felt it failed to. But the the problem with all of this is, like I said. What people always want is something that's going to make them, f like, that's going to make them feel like the games that they played when they were kids did, and it can take a while t to understand that like it's unfair to hold things to that to those kind of standards. Like when I was, I, I talked about the game. I, I do have an interesting story in that regard. All right, go ahead. Uh, because 
I guess for me, like, I adventure was, you know, by what I grew up with, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just like I didn't think any of it, anything of it at the time. I didn't have any preconceived notions about what the series would be. As far as I know, those 3D games were the only games in the series. I didn't know what a Genesis or an NES was when I was little. Um, and so then coming up later and seeing people, this isn't what I grew up with, this isn't what I want. Like, it was easy at the time to kind of dismiss that as nostalgic or whatever, or just people not giving it a fair shot, even. Mm -hmm. And then a couple of years ago, Breath of the Wild came out, and I finally understood what it was like to be on that, you know, and to have that sort of point of view of having a series that you held near and dear and had specific expectations for suddenly turn into something you can't even recognize as being that anymore. And that that was what Breath of the Wild was for me. Really? Huh. Yes. But, uh, but Breath of the... Like, here's the best way I can Breath of the Wild it. is not a Zelda game. I, it is. A, it has Zelda characters in it, but it is not a Zelda game. Not to me. And well, that, okay, I'm glad you said not to me because it's very, very important to say like, I've, I've always I'm always saying things like, okay, what is a Metroid game? What is a Sonic game? What is a Zelda uh, game? Okay, like that that's that's a very subjective thing to ask. Like here's here's how I'm gonna here's how, the best way I can put it. There is a subset of the community that thinks that Zelda 1, you know, the original game, as bad as it was in some ways, got the basic formula right of just plopping you into a world and letting you do whatever, basically. And A Link to the Past, as much as people love that game, there are some who feel that that was where the Zelda series got derailed, for the worst. Because that's where it became more linear and the story became a huge focus, and then we got Ocarina of Time. And then basically every Zelda game after that became some variation of that formula. And Breath of the Wild is basically the original Zelda game in 3D. That See, is the Zelda say game that, but that people... I don't... Sorry. Zelda 1 actually had dungeons in it. Zelda 1 is a much better game than Breath of the Wild, in my opinion. Yeah, that's the, the weird the, thing the, about the, me the, is the, the, the Dungeons Breath of the Wild executes the open world a, a whole lot better, obviously. Look, How could it not? But Look, look I, I say, here's the best way I can break that down. The dungeons have never really been the most important part of Zelda to me. I know that's how some people see it, and the overworld is just a map, just a glorified menu to select a stage. But I've always enjoyed the world of Zelda quite a bit and the dungeons which is kind of a little something extra and here I, I do like the giant animals I do like the shrines how they're essentially mini dungeons when you could just string like 10 or 20 of them together and call that a dungeon but I don't know I kind of like them breaking it up into bite-sized pieces and just letting you like alternate as you go along yeah because I, I, I could I've... forgive the open like, uh, I'll let Josh chime in in a sure, second, sure. but I could forgive the open world more and understand more where you're coming from, Nick, if I thought the world of Breath of the Wild was interesting, but I don't. Mm. It's just a bunch of empty space that you climb around in, and then there's nothing to really do besides shrines and collecting, like, chicken nuggets that you that enemies drop, and then selling those for money. Because for some reason, enemies can't just drop rupees besides the evil Sheikah guys. You have to sell stuff to get rupees because that's more realistic. I don't know. There's I, so many little things I don't like about that game, but... I'll, I'll be you know, honest, that was one of my favorite open worlds in a long time. I do think most open world games are empty and uninteresting. But there were so many landmarks in Breath of the Wild. I just, I love the geography. I love the landscaping. I love the, the rock formations. It felt kind of like going for a stroll in the countryside where I spent some of my life growing up. So maybe that's why I like that. Because it like, took me back to just that exploring and looking for bugs and such that I remembered from you know, my own life. Uh, but I don't know, I just, I love the, the scenery. I love the landscape. It feels more, much more dense, uh, densely packed to I, me than it does to you. It, like I, I think that is just a difference of perspective. I do think they could have done some things when, much when I, better. Like for all the rock climbing there is, I think there should have been skulltulas. Sure, it would have been annoying for them to charge you, but if there was some easy way to fight them while you're climbing, that would have been pretty awesome. Or if there were those other spider things that just kind of jump around, I think a little more enemy diversity would have added a lot to the game. The way I see Breath of the Wild is it's like 
and then I know the like X XO may not agree with this because you know you just said like we're talking about the comparisons between it and Zelda One, but Breath of the Wild felt to me like what it might have looked like if the design principles of Zelda One had been the ones that were sort of emphasized instead of ending Over up where, where Ocarina of Time did, and like this is just how the Zelda series would have evolved, and like here it is. Which is exactly what appealed to me to me so much about it, because like the first Zelda game I played was Link's Awakening, and I played Link to the Past when I was a kid, and I was impressed by the technical details of Ocarina of the Time when it came out, and and you know it came out when I was ten, and, but I but I never really got into it the way I did so many other things. Like this and, is going to sound blasphemous to some people, but I just don't care for most of the dungeons in Zelda games that follow the Ocarina of Time formula. I like the dungeons in yeah, the Zelda. So is there Joyce any reason play. why we couldn't have had an open world and dungeons? No, well, I because agree. they I agree with they that. have to leave they have to leave it open for you to like which dungeon you approach first. The thing about like most dungeons, I thought in that Link Between Worlds did that just fine. Yeah, it did. That game is an ex that game is exactly what Breath of the Wild should have been. The um, the final dungeon, like the way that you can approach Ganon's castle at any time, and the way that it actually has its own architecture and its own little mini bosses and its own little features. Like if every, I know it would have like been like development. It, it would it probably still wouldn't have come out if they tried to develop it that way. I get why the game ended up the way it did, and I really love it the way it is. But I think that when you're looking for ways to improve on the Breath of the Wild formula, having dungeons be not like the Divine Beasts and more like Ganon's Castle is is probably the way to go. But I that at least would have been more interesting. <clears throat> like I would have preferred that game, but it's just like and I think this is because it's like a a lot of you guys have talked about how this game this game that we're playing right now, <laughs> and I keep dying on, on this part coming up. But uh, it part of the one of the things you've criticized about is the fact that like oh this is only here for you to do that specific thing and they repeat that particular you know set piece and whatnot right and that to me is just how like the in terms of game design in terms of how specifically how environments are built and how levels are designed that's just the way that makes sense to me right and the problem with breath of the wild is that so much of that game is a choose your own adventure type deal and a lot of the stuff that you climb around and interact with in that game doesn't really serve a particular function that you get an experience out of. The experience is just wandering around. And that to me just does, is not appealing whatsoever. I guess it's just that in a lot of, you know, more that open dude, world- Dude, Sonic, world, come oh. on. <laughs> in a lot of open world games to give you a sort of checklist of very repetitive things to do, Whereas in Breath of the Wild, it was more unpredictable. Oftentimes, I would just see a ledge or a mountainside, and I'd be curious. You know, I'd get an inkling that there might be something up there, and I end up having a really good time. Like, there was this one point where there were these two mountains that were pretty close together, but one of them was much taller than the other. And basically, I had to climb up the first mountain to a point, then glide under the second mountain, climb up that, and then glide back to the first mountain. That was a really fun experience for me, um, but I understand that that might seem kind of shallow to some people. Like, I, it's like if, if yeah. people get a kick out of just, you know, kind of getting immersed in a world and just wandering around and see what you can do, you know, that's fine. See, that's weird. That's what's weird but about that Breath of the Wild, But that to me is though. not what Zelda is about, and that's not even what Zelda 1 was about. Yet people act like it, Breath of the Wild is like Zelda 1 done modernized, but it's not. It's not like Zelda 1. The only comparison to Zelda 1 is that it's open-ended, but again, like Between Worlds did that fine. It still had dungeons, it still was a Zelda game, but it was more open-ended. And if people want the games to be more open-ended, I'm fine with that. But there are ways to do that without throwing out the baby with the bathwater, so to speak. Again, what's weird I, is that I, just what's weird is that I oh. normally... Like, I don't care for immersive worlds, adventuring around and wandering around and picking up collectibles. Like, that doesn't do it for me inherently, but I think I think Breath of the Wild's, like, gameplay just stays engaging to me, and that really helps. Well, you see, that's, that's what it was like for me, because areas like that, that pitch black forest, like, at the far side of the world, there were a lot of areas like that that, sure, they weren't called a dungeon, but they felt kind of like a dungeon to me. 
and my like navigating them, it wasn't as simple as like, oh, I opened a special chest that has an item specific to this area. I was just, um, because that's the thing that I don't like about the Ocarina of Time kind of formula is that oftentimes dungeons will have this one special item that you use for the rest of that dungeon and it makes it super easy and it might not have that much applicability in other dungeons. And that was one thing I actually admired about Twilight Princess was that a lot of the items in that were much more versatile and had their uses in other areas that they weren't explicitly designed for. I, I like that. Um, I just, uh, I don't know, I just, I love the the areas of Breath of the Wild where uh, it's just like me figuring things out on my own. But yeah, Exo, I, I think the point is it's not, I don't think it is necessarily the case that like, oh, Breath of the Wild is so much like Zelda 1, it executes on the same thing Zelda 1 does. But for me personally, like, so after all this time of like not being able to get into Zelda games, not really like it, like I, I played Zelda 1 before, but I hadn't really gotten too far in it because, you know, it was... It always did seem pretty old. And then one day, when, like, I, I remember very specifically because it was the day before my second, like, I think my second or third semester of college started. So I was about 20 years old. And uh, I just sat down one night and played all the way through the NES version of Zelda 1. And I'd never done that with a Zelda game before or gotten that invested in one before. And I remember thinking, like, man, if this was sort of the concept that the series executed on and evolved from then I think I'd have a lot more... I think Zelda would appeal to me a lot more. But of course, that's never going to happen because Ocarina of Time is what it is. It, it was so revolutionary, and that's what people think of as Zelda. So Breath of the Wild gives me the same feeling that I had playing through Zelda 1. Not necessarily... That doesn't necessarily mean that it does things the same way or executes on things the same way, but exploring it and playing it, it seems to be built with the same sort of... Um, I guess you know, say qua behind it. I think we can all agree that the next Zelda game should take some things from both, you know, types of games. You yeah. should take some things from Breath of the Wild and maybe some things from Ocarina of Time and, uh, and so on, and you know, like have more actual dungeons in it. Okay, it's just um, for me uh, the dungeons were never the main draw of Zelda to me, which I know probably sounds weird, so maybe that's why I wasn't as offended by them not being as big a thing in Breath of the Wild. 